In this video I'm going to be doing some float fishing to target some thick lip mullet using bread flake. I've got a little bread mix made up, um, I've just chucked out a few spoonfuls as well just while I'm getting everything prepped. Um, hopefully that gets the fish on the feed and hopefully there's some fish here this morning. So here it is guys, the uh, salmon worm stick, uh, 17 foot float rod and it's a 15 to 45 gram casting weight and uh, yeah, Ron Thompson edition is really nice first time I've used this one um, I've borrowed my mate Rob's before and fell in love with it so uh, I decided to get myself one for, especially for fishing places like here you're gonna have um, a better line pickup on the fish as well with a longer rod so it's, it's pretty much foolproof hopefully <laughs> but uh, I fitted it with a uh, Shimano Katana 4000 and loaded it with 8 pound uh, mono so on the uh, float side of things then I've got a waggler float here and it's a weighted waggler, so it's uh, three grams of weight on it, and then I've added five grams myself. Um, it's fixed in position using the uh, rubbers there and there, and then I've just put the line through the swivel that's there, trapping it. So if I want to come up in depth, all I do is just slide it up the line like that and uh, reverse to uh, set it a little bit shallower. So after I've threaded the line through the float and uh, got the float fixed in position, I slide up some uh, drilled shot there. I prefer using this drilled shot as I'm not having to crimp it on the line. And uh, yeah, I've noticed since I've been using it, I don't get as many like break-offs near the uh, swivel where the, the crimping of the uh, lead shots damage the, the eight pound line. When you use an eight pound, the last thing you want to do is damage it in any way. Um, after that, I've gone for a little swivel and then eight pound fluorocarbon down to a size eight Camazan specialist wide gate. So that's the setup I'm gonna be using today. I'm gonna to be baiting up with bread flake. I'll show you that in a second. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll just get on the way. So when it comes to putting on the bread flake, there's a, there's a couple of ways you can actually do it. Um, I usually just take off a little pinch like that. And then what I like to do, put the hook inside it like that, just laying on top, pinch around the top of the hook. And that is pretty much it. So that's what they're gonna be going for, that fluffy bit there. And uh, in turn, hopefully get hooked up. So uh, yeah, hopefully you can see that all right. That's what I'm gonna go for, a little bread flake like that. You can do it a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller, but that, that's usually about ideal. Um, especially at the start of the session. Once you've got them on the feed, you can go even even uh, smaller uh, with the hope that they just slam it straight away. But this is a good size to probably start off with, I find anyway. So just had a half decent bite then guys. Dip the float under a little bit. Fairly slowly as well, like I'm not sure if you can see there's a fish on it now. Just sucking away at that bread I think. So I think I managed to find them at the right depth. see that I don't know if you can see that on the camera it's just dipping down ever so slightly I presume that's mullet because they're not taking it straight away a couple of minutes after I've had the bite the initial bite and then it goes quiet and just uh, double check my bread and make sure that I've got my uh, bread flake on still or what you'll usually find especially an easy way of telling if it's a mullet is you'll come back with a little bit of bread on there but you'll be able to see the uh, hook point and all that they've just plucked it around the uh, around that fluffy bit I was showing you when I put it on so they've actually managed to to uh, eat it without getting hooked there is a little bit of weed around here at the moment um, 
unfortunately around this time of year Jersey South Coast is renowned for this green stuff here um, and it just destroys our beaches um, the only good thing about it is I don't think the guys that do the netting can actually net when all that green stuff's there it's not very nice so as you can see that fluffy bit it's definitely been plucked by something and there's a little bit of a hook point show in there so I'm just going to put a new uh, new flake on and uh, get it back out you can see there the, the bread offerings I put out is, uh, is actually drifting in that direction and what's not sunk stayed on the surface the seagulls are picking off further out there um, so it's kind of good it keeps the seagulls away from me they're taking the uh, floating bread um, I think it's a little bit too early in the year to see um, mullet taking the floating bread here No, that drifter's a little bit quiet, so I'll have, have a quick check of the uh, bread flake again and just see. And it is a little bit tedious, it's literally a case of uh, just keep drifting um, the bread flake down the tide. And uh, if, if there's a little bit of action going on, then usually, um, usually it keeps you on your toes and it's a bit more exciting. There you go, typical mullet, not sure if you can see, it's taken everything but the hook. So it's taken that fluffy bit. Now there is another way I bait up a red flake, which I'll show you now, which kind of helps with that. So I'll do that now. So I put the uh, hook a bit further down into the fluff. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. They just pluck round it still. And, uh, quite a bit of fluff and just compress it down around the hook but have it still fluffy like that and I find that works a little bit if they're being a bit picky that's just what I've found that seems to work for me so uh, yeah I'll try that now and see hopefully we get one now <laughs> so aside from the uh, thick lip mullet here uh, you literally could encounter anything whilst doing this um, you could get gilt-head bream, you could get black bream, get bass, garfish or a mackerel. Those are some of the things we've had, uh, me and my friend Rob, whilst doing this sort of uh, kind of session. Um, yeah, so you really don't know what's going to happen. It just depends on what's uh, in the area and just comes in on the bread that's uh, being offered out. I tell you what, on a morning like this, I don't mind if uh, if it's a blank session. It's uh, just nice to get out and uh, have a little crack at it. One thing I, when I was learning to mullet fish, is one thing that I was terrible at was uh, keeping control of my slack line on the float. So uh, when I was actually striking a fish, all I was doing was striking the slack because I had too much slack. So now I like to have just a little bow in it. Um, makes it a little bit easier with this longer rod shouldn't miss as many bites as I uh, usually do with my 13 foot rod. So the float's pretty much at the end of its drift now and uh, it just had a little nudge. The float dipped down ever so slightly. I think what it could be is a lot of um, smaller mullet, like the uh, ones about a pound in size that are around and uh, they're the ones that are plucking away this bread. And they can be quite finicky around here. It's almost like the dogfish of mullet fishing as a tiny mullet. <laughs> that looked like a little bite again. Float is definitely dipping down. No. Got to be so quick with these things. Oh, there's a couple of mullet swimming. Just as I'm bringing my uh, float out of the water, you might have seen it on the camera, I'm not sure if I captured it, but there was a couple of mullet right in close, literally I could have netted them. So guys, a couple of drifts in and uh, nothing really to report apart from seeing two half decent sized mullet come right up uh, up close into the boulders there, they're about two, three foot underwater and they're about around two, three pounds pair of them. So uh, I didn't get 
that much of a good look at them. I might have caught a little bit on camera as I was bringing the, my line in there, but yeah, they look decent. I think they were thick lips as well, so uh, that's a good sign. Um, tide's starting to pick up a little bit now as it's uh, coming out of this marina, so uh, the fishing should improve. Uh, one thing I need to be sure of is uh, the rocks that I stand on now as the tides recede and are dry because they are literally like ice. I've, I've been on these rocks a few times and all it takes is a boat to drive past, you're stood on a dry rock, you get a bit of a bit of a splash uh, or a wave from, from the boat as it's coming past, a bit from the wake, it wets the rock and then that's you, you're in the drink and that's happened to me twice now. Um, it's funny but if, if you're uh, fishing like now and you bang your head on these rocks uh, from doing that, it's, it's, not, it's not nice. So uh, yeah, just one thing to be wary of if you are local to Jersey and you are going to fish down it, just make sure the rocks are bone dry when you're standing on them. There's a couple of fish, I don't know if you've seen that one there, just in the corner of the shop probably. There's some small mullet, really small mullet, just taken off the top. I thought it might have been a bit early for that, but this hot weather I think maybe uh, got them in the mood. So I'm fishing quite close in now. And uh, a little bit shallower as well. So the float's just going to do its thing, it's just bouncing over the boulders as it goes out on the drift. And I think we're set about the right depth. Hopefully there's a few of those nice ones close in still. Oh! Here's the little plague of them. Taking it off the top, they're small ones though, I'm not interested in them. these big ones. Oh that's a slightly better one. I might come really shallow if they're taking this floating bread. I could put a, uh, a floating rig on but I can't be bothered to be honest. I know what will happen as soon as I set up a uh, bubble float sod's law they'll be uh, they'll be taking about 10 foot deep so I've come up come up now I'm probably fishing about two or three foot oh missed that one that's a good bite it's the one thing <laughs> The one thing that cracks me up is when you strike it and you miss it, your float is mid-air. There we go. We're in. Oh, and he's off. And he's off. Oh, felt the weight of that one. Not very big. There are some better ones there. I've seen a couple of better ones already. So far, um, still nothing to the net, uh, probably about an hour in, an hour and a bit in, uh, but about half an hour ago I managed to get a load feeding and uh, they're actually feeding on the top now, so uh, what I'm going to do is put my float a little bit shallower, um, fish a little bit shallower and do a few trots like that and uh, hopefully can find one. So what I'm going to do now guys is I'm missing quite a few bites um, and unfortunately I just struck a fish and got my trace stuck in one of the boulders and as I pulled it out it's uh, pinged the uh, trace off. I've still got my uh, leads and stuff. Somehow they they didn't uh, come off even though there was no swivel there. So uh, I'm just going to put another trace on but I'm going to go with a slightly smaller hook if I can. I think I've got some really small ones there. I'm going to do tiny little bits of bread and uh, see if that can winkle one out. Um, I haven't got long today so this was only meant to be a short session of about two hours but I'm actually pushing it now so I'm gonna change hook and I'm gonna go for one of these if you can see that it's a Drennan um, Drennan micro barbed wide gape specialist I'm gonna try that hopefully find one on the uh, end of my line soon Going to be a little bit sketchy if I get one now because these rocks are a bit wet from uh, the tide going out and they haven't dried yet and I don't think my net's going to be long enough 
Um, so hopefully it's a small one, I can just winch up and catch it. Oh, there was a good bite there. Yay, there we go. We're in. Very small. Probably not even a pound. These are the ones that have been giving me uh, trouble all morning. Really small little fish. Right guys, here it is. The little buggers that are uh, giving me so much trouble this morning. Really small fish. Tiny, tiny mullet at the moment coming in. This one's not even a pound. A couple of ounces, this one. Right then guys, I've uh, just moved around the corner a little bit. There's a little bit of slack tide here, so I'm going to fish here and try and see if I can catch one. I'll put a smaller hook on, so it should be some good fun if I hook one. Just got to make use of what's in front of you this morning. Really tiny little mullet. Just hoping there's that them bigger ones that are around as well. There's a slightly better fish out there. Bigger one following it. Bigger one there. I don't know if you can see him. That's the one I was looking at. There, taking the bread. It's the matter of trying to get down to him. Man. So sketchy. No, probably not even a pound. <laughs> Good fun though. It's just hard netting them, so because uh, it's the rocks are so slippy. But yeah, it's, it's making for a fun morning. Plenty of them about. There's a better one there. He was chasing this one in when I was reeling him in. He looked about maybe about just shy of three pounds. So hopefully can uh, get him on the next cast. But there is a bigger fish out there. So when I say bigger, he's he's only about three pounds. Like straight away. Oh, is it gonna go? I was almost striking that then. Yay! Another little one, I think. I don't think this is that big one. Or well, it might be. Yeah, this feels quite good actually. Maybe it's in the tide. This could be that better one that was going around. Hopefully you can see this on the camera. It's not a huge one. I was saying that. He's not too he's not too small. I knew there was a slightly bigger one. And I think this could be him. Uh, got lots of energy this one. I'm going to need to try and attempt to go and net him. Uh, yeah, he's not a bad one actually. Considering the, the size of the others, I'm going to have to make my way down and try and get this one now. Apologies for the camera, it's just so sketchy here. Rocks are so slippy. Uh, Trying to think of the best way to get this one actually. All right, this one's not given up. Full of beans. Full of beans. 
He might not actually be a bad fish. I've only had a little look at him, I think he's about three. He's going well on this rod. Oh, and it's so hard because there's a little rock right there. And I've got a small net. I'd have him in already now if I had my big net. Oh, I don't know how I'm going to do that. I'm going to have to stand on the net. Try and... It's horrible because I've got top end this rod. We have to try and bring him in this way. Oh, it's hard giving it like... Come on, that's it. I'm losing out too much. No, 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 come back. Yeah! Hey, hey. He's not a beast. Probably about three pound. Whew. Right guys, so I've just uh, winkled out that slightly better one that was out there, taking bread off the top, and uh, there he is, he's about three pound, I'd say. Not not over three, but he's around that. Uh, all the rest are about 10 ounces a pound, and uh, this is the one that was uh, causing havoc on that floating bread, so I'm glad I got him. But I'm running so late now, so I'm gonna need to wrap it up there. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you enjoyed the video, then hit the like button and uh, subscribe to the channel. That would be much appreciated. Until the next video, until the next mullet session, I'll see you next time.